At least 10 New Zealand passengers from the Diamond Princess are expected to board a Qantas flight tomorrow bound for Auckland via Darwin, where they will spend 14 days in quarantine at Whangaparawa. The timing will be perfect. The 157 people who travelled from Wuhan two weeks ago are due to leave the camp tomorrow to return to their homes. The government says it's also in touch with 16 New Zealanders who got off Holland America's MS Westerdam in Cambodia last week, just hours hours before an elderly passenger tested positive for coronavirus. It comes as Australian scientists study the outbreak in a lab in a bid to work out how long the COVID-19 strain can survive outside the body. And they say the Diamond Princess cruise ship could provide vital clues to how it spreads and reacts. The Doherty Institute in Melbourne has been growing the virus in a lab. I asked the director, Professor Sharon Lewin, what's known about how long it can live on a surface inside a plane or a camper van, for example. We don't know the answer to that currently. Um, Other coronaviruses can, meaning that if you um, put the coronavirus on a surface and then go back and test it hours or even days later, you can find genetic material of that virus. Now, how infectious that genetic material is is less clear. Now, those experiments have not been done um, uh, systematically and extensively for SARS-CoV-2, which is the current, this new coronavirus that we're talking about. Really, most of the people that um, have been diagnosed, or certainly in Australia, but um, uh, also in China, that the highest risk is being exposed to someone um, that is carrying the virus. That's the most efficient way these viruses spread. So is that something we should be finding out? Because obviously at the moment in New Zealand we have people in isolation um, in basically a camper van village. We've had all these people um, being infected on the cruise ship. Is that material information, how long it can survive? It will be important information. At the moment, again, based on our um, previous understanding of other coronaviruses, uh, which cause the common cold as well as severe disease like SARS and MERS. Um, In hospitals, for example, if um, people are wearing appropriate protective equipment, um, a mask and gown, for example, um, then they're protected from infection. Now, in the community, um, we're still learning quite a bit about this. Um, As we discussed earlier, understanding its persistence on surfaces and potential to infect someone from the surface is really important. Um, And more importantly, what we don't know at the moment is how infectious, whether people are really infectious when they're incubating the virus or not symptomatic. Um, There is a suggestion from the experience in China that uh, people may transmit the virus while they're not unwell, and that's what is making this a much more challenging virus to control than our experience with SARS back in 2003 when it was very clear that you only transmitted the virus when you were very unwell. Um, And that meant if you were very unwell, you were in hospital and so appropriate containment measures could be put in place. And that is a big unknown here. Um, And uh, we do know that most a large amount of transmission would occur when you're symptomatic, but if Transmission also occurs at some level when you're asymptomatic. It means it's a lot more challenging to control. So on that note, is it possible for someone to have coronavirus, never exhibit any symptoms at all during the infection and still be spreading it? We don't know the answer to that currently. Is that something that you are looking into at the Doherty Institute or... Or is anyone? Um, we're very, yes, very an area of active um, investigation because, first of all, does that happen? And if it does happen, how important is it? You know, is that a, a major um, a route of transmission or is it a minor and infrequent route of transmission? And those questions are really important. Um, I anticipate they could be answered in the analysis of what's going on in Japan because you've got a sort of captive group of 3,000 people who are asymptomatic and then becoming unwell. In China, um, those studies, I'm sure, are happening right now. 
Uh, the problem at the moment in China, particularly in Hubei province, is the numbers of people that are infected and therefore people that are very sick and overwhelming their healthcare system and obviously the priorities go towards that. But it's a really important question that needs to be answered. In Australia, um, we've had 15 diagnoses of this new coronavirus. All of them have had or been in um, Wuhan or Hubei province, so therefore had a clear exposure. And so we haven't been able to systematically study people that may have been exposed but not um, unwell. Uh, but there's a lot of interest in um, a systematic study of contacts of people that are diagnosed with this infection. That one study we're hoping to do in Australia. So does the cruise ship, the Diamond Princess then, offer in some way a useful case study? Because you've had, well, basically the population of a small town on there in close contact. What can you learn from that experience? Oh, absolutely. A huge amount. First of all, the most important thing about that cruise ship is to make sure that everyone's well looked after. Anyone that's sick gets the best care and every effort's made to prevent infection. I mean, that's number one, um, the most important thing healthcare authorities can do in that situation. But it's really important to um, study what's happening while it's happening. That can be challenging, but we know it's possible and it's critically important. And I understand that in Japan, in, in on the cruise ship, there's lots of people being tested. They're being tested when they're asymptomatic or symptomatic. Um, and uh, there will be a lot that we can learn, and I hope that those studies are happening. In, in um, They would be led by Japan, of course. Um, really important to learn as we go. That's what makes um, this a challenging but um, area of to work in, um, but also, of course, very interesting because the knowledge is appearing as we're responding to this new infection. If we don't do the research at the time that this is unfolding, we won't know how to, you know, intervene appropriately and we certainly won't know for the next time, which is absolutely critical. The advice we have at the moment is to um, put people in isolation for 14 days if, if there is um, fear of con contact and um, infection. Yet there is this study that is being reported in Chinese media indicating that one person developed coronavirus after 24 days. So c could that be the case, that incubation takes way longer than two weeks? Well, there's two... There's a few potential explanations of that. Either the there's, a, there's always a range. First of all, when people when we say the incubation period for an illness is seven or fourteen days, there will always be a range of shorter and slightly longer. That would be the average. So you always you're looking at where the average incubation period is. Is fourteen yeah. days of isolation enough? If that is the average. Well, if it is um, the average, 14 days of isolation may well be enough for 99% of people, for example. So um, we, it's not always a perfect um, estimate. There will be outliers. That's one interpretation. Another interpretation, of course, is that over that period there was a re-exposure that the individual was unaware of. Um, and that's another potential explanation for why you might get a very delayed presentation. So you have been growing this virus in a lab. What what new information have you discovered about it as a consequence? We are very keen in using that virus to test antiviral drugs and to see what drugs will work to block growth of the virus. We're very interested in understanding how long the virus can last on surfaces um, and what interventions could decontaminate surfaces. And we're also going to use um, that virus to develop a vaccine and an animal model for um, COVID-19. An animal model will be extremely important to test any vaccine candidates. 